Welcome to You Make the Difference. I'm Wanda Walker and I have as my guest today Chowton Askew. Chowton is the pastor at Church of the King and we're going to talk about fathers today. With Father's Day just uh, right here on us, we're um, interested in establishing better fatherhood in the community and celebrating the fatherhood that we have already that is very good. And Chowton, you want to inspire men to take their roles as fathers today, is that right? Certainly, I believe that men could use a little stimulating uh, to go to the next level in our fatherhood and to just expand our role and in, in the impact that we make in our community and in the lives of our children. Yes, and you were talking uh, before the show and it was very interesting to me that uh, you were saying that the father is really the stable force in the home? From my perspective, I've seen and just observed that fathers uh, become like a stabilizer to a family. Where there's a strong father figure, uh, the children feel protected, they feel loved, uh, the wife uh, feels supported. Yes. And it's kind of like the glue that holds everything together. And I'm not taking anything away from moms and what they bring to the table in their respective places. But when there's a strong father in the home, how much more is added and yes. how comfortable the children feel. And, and it's, it's just a, a divine connection. And I believe it's the way God intended it. And you were saying that, you know, each father has strengths that they can uh, convey to their children and, and help their children in certain areas. And that, you know, fathers may not have every strength, but you were going to offer some advice to those fathers who need, who need a little help. or uh, And I want you to encourage fathers in... Uh, taking their role because of their strengths. You want to talk a little bit about that? Uh, certainly, Wanda. We all can make a difference, and it depends, I believe, sometimes uh, just on the insight or the revelation we have. Uh, oftentimes, we don't particularly see our strengths. Uh, we have areas in our lives that we feel more comfortable with, uh, but I believe, men, that you have something to contribute to our society that will make a difference if we choose to just yield to the leading of the Spirit and allow Him to even groom us at times. Uh, it's easier to start in the areas where we feel comfortable uh, sharing with others and allowing that spirit of fatherhood to grow, mature, and be used. I believe we're conduits uh -huh. you know and God can tap into us he really knows us and so he'll connect us in the areas where our strengths can be accented and you actually uh, gain a little confidence you know just by allowing the Lord to use those strengths uh, I also believe that we're always going to be on the potter's wheel yes and that he's always going to be chiseling away uh, areas in our lives that uh, Oftentimes, and even as pastors and members of the body of Christ, we look for that uh, perfection. You know, we want to be that polished package before we start being used of God. But what I've learned is that uh, you gain so much wisdom just by yielding to God and, and that he'll really father us That's in how right. to be fathers. Yes. I think he's a good teacher. He is a great teacher. <laughs> and you know, um, I think went to a class one time and they gave us a questionnaire and we filled it out about how we felt about our fathers and we rated it one to five and um, those attributes that that we thought our father had or our father lacked and then there was a question on there that said uh, how how much do you believe your father cherished you and you rated that one to five. And then we filled out something about our mothers and rated them on their attributes. And, and then that question about how much do you feel your mother cherished you? And what was interesting to me is that I rated both of them the same on the level of, 
how much they cherished me. Wow. And we evaluated God and what were, what were his attributes, you know. And, you know, were we, well, like with a father, were they loving or were they mm -hmm. angry, you know, those kinds of things. And it was so interesting of how the impression that you had from your father, it, it really gave you a picture of God. And so the father, in a, for a child, is to represent what God is to them. And on cherishing how much I was cherished, my mother and my father was, were the same in what I rated. And when it got to God, it was the same. Wow. And so, you know, it's, it's like we, we get our impression of God from our parents, but more so our father. And so it is very important that the Father model love, forgiveness, and all those things that, that we need. Being there when we're hurt, um, giving us the security, helping us be stabilized in our life. And, and when the Father is able to do that, then the child has a healthy relationship with the Lord and also um, a correct impression of who God is. So it's very important. And I, I want to talk about, Chowton, some of the men in your life that have um, been mentors, maybe even without realizing it. Uh, but you grew up in Cannonville. I did, and Cannonville is a, a unique community. I believe that uh, we embrace that philosophy that it takes a village to raise a child. And I, I was listening at you speak of your assessments of your parents. And, you know, unfortunately, that's not the same for many of the children in our community um, have not seen that type of modeling. So you're kind of, of an exception here. But I believe also that God always has a ram in the bush. Uh -huh. And that's what I... Uh, my self-experience in uh, Cannonville, you have uh, some men that were very engaged in their children's lives, and then we had others that were uh, less engaged, but there was uh, enough mixture of men that you could watch the things that they did and how they spoke and related to you as a child that so encouraged you at the times that uh, you needed you needed it. Mm -hmm. You know, we, were, we didn't have an abundance of toys, things, money, but there was a, just a, a sense of unity and cohesion and love and that there was an expectant, expectancy of you doing well in life and, you know, and people encouraged you to do well in school and uh, we had uh, an athletic community and, and I, you know, I really just enjoyed that oneness, yes. you know, that oneness and the support of family, uh, whether it's biological or surrogate. And so you do catch manhood principles from men that are around you. And at times you long for uh, the embrace of fathers and uh, the affirmation that a man brings. Uh, you don't know the weight of the words that a man speaks to yes. another man until you're at a low point in life and, and you're at the crossroads and you're trying to determine which way to go. And when God uses another man to just come and speak into your life and it, and it just stabilizes you, yes. stabilizes you, especially when... I'm going to say there is a ministry call on a, on a life because I believe you're born with that. You don't always understand it. Right. And it can be confusing uh, to a child like mine uh -huh. uh, that you're a little different. And God used uh, strategic men in my life to help me come to terms. Uh, with his plan for my life. It helped me to understand it. And 
one of those instances happened when I was about 10 years old mm -hmm. that a man spoke to me out of the blue for me, but not out of the blue for God, that yes. he says, I believe that God has a special plan for your life. And, you know, it was probably a little longer than that. I don't remember all the details, but what it did was to help me understand the difference yes. that I was experiencing and not able to put in words. And so it helped me to hold on to say, you know what, God has a plan and he's going to use my life. Yes. And I think it was 10 or 15 years later, I was out of state that another man mm -hmm. came and spoke those exact words yes. to me, uh, which again brought a settling in my spirit about God has a plan uh, for my life. And oftentimes we've uh, looked at other people's lives and we've decided what we want it to be and what we wanted our life to be like. And, you know, I'm encouraging young men to allow God to speak. Yes. You know, allow God to speak. And also, fathers, uh, let's take the initiative to speak to young men as the Lord would bring a, a revelation, understanding, or some truth to us about others. Let's be open and, um, you know, take the risk. Yes. Assume the risk to speak into another young man's life. And you'd be surprised, uh, men of this region, and how much it would make a difference in a, in a young child's life. It validates you, doesn't it? It, it, it makes, uh, it answers some of the questions. Yes, it's a validation. Um, we're not here to exist in this life. There's a, a distinct purpose that we are to fulfill a role and we have to engage in it. I believe that, you know, just seeing others give back in our community um, put the seed in me to want to give back and want to make a difference. I think God determines our DNA and our makeup and the things we gravitate towards, but he's always uh, used me as a community-minded man. I like to say I grew into a kingdom man and a yes. kingdom way of thinking where everybody uh, you meet and see belongs to the Lord. Yes. And however he chooses to use you, when and where, that's at his discretion as uh, just so we're doing something to make a difference. Yes, and I, I just am reminded of a story that John Kilpatrick told. He, he was with the Pensacola Revival. He's the pastor there. And he talked about how God laid it on his heart to teach about the Father's love. And the, and the role of the father in the home. And he said that, you know, it was a series and uh, there was a young man in his church who was just so uncomfortable. You know, he came and he would mm -hmm. sit on the, on the back row and mm -hmm. um, Pastor Kilpatrick said, you know, I would try to get back to say hello to him before he left, but he, he was just out of the church. And you could tell that, you know, he didn't have confidence and those kinds of things. And he said, um, after he had preached the messages on the Father's love and encouraged uh, young men and, and ladies who had never heard their father give them a blessing to go to their fathers and ask for one, because you know, in the, in the Jewish homes, the fathers bless the children every Friday night. And so, uh, and you can tell in the Jewish population how they are just so bright and they, they get so many awards and those kinds of things. They have been affirmed by their father. And so um, John said that he was getting ready to preach one night and this young man just came right up on the stage mm -hmm. and said, Pastor, do you have a minute to talk to me? Mm -hmm. 
And he said, you know, he really didn't because he was getting ready to preach, but he said, there is no way that I would have not given that young man my mm -hmm. time. And he said that, um, he said, I just want you to know how those talks and, and sermons on the Father's love blessed me. And he said, as a result of those, I decided to go to my father and ask for a blessing. And he said, you know, I had to make a four hour trip. And he said, I was very nervous because my father was a mean man. <laughs> and he said, um, when I left my father's house, he told me that I would never amount to anything, that uh, he never wanted me, me to step foot back into the house, you know, that I, I was just a nothing and a nobody. And he said, um, I sat out in front of the house for probably 20 minutes trying to get my nerve up to go in and, and ask my daddy for the blessing. You know, even a knock on the door was scary. And he said, you know, I finally had the courage to put my mm. hand on the handle of the car <laughs> and open it up and go in. And when I saw my daddy, when he opened the door, it was what he had expected. He was like, what are you doing here? Wow. Didn't I tell you never to come back? You know, didn't I tell you never going to amount to anything? And he said, I said, yes, Daddy, you did tell me. And he said, what you said to me has come true. He said, I haven't amounted to anything. I haven't been able to keep a job. He said, I, I took a paper route to throw out papers at night so that I wouldn't have to interact with people. I, I don't have a girlfriend, you know, I, I'm just suffering and, and I have never amounted to anything. But my pastor has, has preached about the importance of a father's blessing. And I've come just to ask you, if you can think of just one thing mm -hmm. to say to me, to bless me, then I'm going to ask you to say it. And he said, I'm going to go back and I'm going to sit in the back bedroom and I'm, I'm just going to wait. And if you can, you know, I'm going to have, I, he said he's going to turn his chair so you don't even have to look at me. And so he went back there and he said he could, he could hear his daddy pacing mm -hmm. the floor. <laughs> and I believe it had like a, a heater vent on the, on the floor and he could hear him crossing back and forth. And he said, um, after a long period of time, the door opened. And he said his daddy came in and his daddy was sobbing. And he's, he said the Holy Spirit moved on his daddy and he was able to bless him. And wow. he said when he started to bless him, the blessings just flew out of his daddy's mouth you know, that, that he would amount to something and that he was a good son. And you know, I think about um, a time where, where somebody told me I was a good daughter uh, when they were doing the Father's blessing over me. And what an impact that made. We need to hear we're a good son or we're a good daughter. And we need to hear it from our daddy. <clears throat> but um, he came back to the pastor and he said, you know, I. I haven't been the same since then. Mm -hmm. He said, I, I'm going for an interview for a job tomorrow. And he said, I'm going to get that job. You know, he had the confidence mm -hmm. to know that his life was changing. And he said, um, that's my girlfriend back there. And said, you know, we're going to get married. Wow. So, I mean, it just turned his life around. And, and that really shows to me just the importance of the blessing. And you know, even in a Christian home, a lots of times um, the children, they may not feel blessed. And so John Kilpatrick said, he blessed his grown children. And, and he said, you know, he laid hands on his son and his son said, you know, daddy, you don't have to do this. We know you love us, you've been a good daddy. But he said, I laid hands on my sons. I said, you know, I, I want you to forgive me for the times that I failed you, the times that I wasn't there for you, uh, the times that 
you know, you needed to hear a word from your father and you mm -hmm. didn't. And he said, um, and I want to tell you that you're a good son, mm -hmm. that you're going to go far in life, that there are, mm -hmm. the favor of the Lord is on you. You're going to bless people. You're blessed in the city and you're blessed everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. You know, just those kinds mm -hmm. of things. And he said his son, who was like six foot something, was trembling under that, tears rolling down their faces. And so we do want to encourage fathers that you are extremely important mm -hmm. in your children's life. And it doesn't have to be a formal blessing. You know, you don't have to say fancy words. You can just say, you know, son, daughter, I am proud of you. I'm proud to be your daddy. And that, you know, I think you're a wonderful person. I see the talents that you have in your life. Um, and I see that God's hand is on you. And I see that you're a blessing to the people that are around you. You're a blessing to your mother. You're a blessing to me. You're a gift to this family. And, you know, kids need to know, too, sometimes that uh, we've messed up and that and we need to apologize to our children and to let them know that we're not always perfect and that we love them, whether they're perfect, perfect behaving children or not. And, and we see the potential that they have in their life and that we're going to support them and we're going to undergird them. And so Charlton and I just talked and talked, but I think it's important that we start talking about the blessing and how to give it. We should, we should, because as men, oftentimes we're satisfied with having the thought. Yes. With having the thought, but we don't share it. Yes. And we don't share it with our children. And so we can watch their lives and say what a blessing they are uh, to the community, to family and to uh -huh. society, but we don't ever express that to them. Men, we have a, sometimes a challenge, and so we got to challenge ourselves to speak those things out of our mouths while we have the time to say them. That's and, right. You know, and let uh, fill our children's ears with those words yes. of affirmation. And not only our biological children, but any child that the Lord causes us to have influence in their lives, whether it, you know, uh, it's in athletic activities, uh, church, church youth groups, or just children from the neighborhood. That's right. That's right. You know, and, and even like if, if a child's picture is in the paper, you know, cut that picture out and send it to that child and say, you know, I am proud of you or, or I see what you're doing and it's really great. And you know, um, I've had opportunities to go into the schools a little bit for some of the assemblies that they've had and we congratulated those children on their accomplishments and it is so appreciated. I think, you know, sometimes we don't realize the peer pressure or or even the pressure that we as parents put on our children to, to behave all the time or to uh, make good grades and those kinds of things. But, you know, when we can just undergird and we can, we can share with them from our heart our delight in them, because I think the Father has delight in us and in the children and we get to participate in showing forth that delight of God when we show the children that they are definitely special. That's indeed true. Uh, a lot of times we teach our children societal acceptance and how to blend in society and societies fulfilling society's expectations and those things are not bad but we as parents and fathers should make sure that that's balanced yes. with the heavenly father's expectation and show uh, our children how to be accepted you know from our father above yes 
who will always be there and who will never fail us. And we can always go to him and express our deepest hurts. And yes. we could cry out to him and pray to him and he will be a perfect model because oftentimes we're looking for that perfect model of fatherhood and God will always allow man to fall short of perfection in our eyes and we don't fully understand that and it doesn't always feel good but uh -huh. as we grow and become older we uh, gain an understanding and an appreciation that there is a perfect father and he still lives and he loves me and I am accepted in the beloved by faith in his son. Yes. <clears throat> and Chowton, as a father in our community, I would like for you to just to look over here and to speak a father's blessing to those that are watching. And it may be uh, people who are older or people who are younger, but everybody needs to hear a father's blessing. So could you do that for us? Certainly I, I can. I would like to, to speak to young men, women, uh, old and young. The father has need of you. He loves you and uh, he created you in his image and in his likeness and his plan for you is uh, for the entirety of your life and that plan is to prosper you, to give you a hope, a future, and expected end, which includes blessings. There are times of challenge in all of our lives, but I say don't allow those challenges to deter you. You are here on purpose, with purpose, for a purpose, and don't be satisfied until that purpose is realized. And I'd like to say that your birth certificate can tell you many things, your hair color, your eye color, your weight, when you were born, but only our Father knows why, knows why. And make that your lifelong goal and ambition is to fulfill the why. Yes. To fulfill the why. So we affirm you in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless you. Every difficulty and every challenge that you're facing right now, God has already factored that into his divine plan. Go to your Father, which is in heaven, and he will strengthen you. The Lord bless and the Lord keep you forever and ever. Thank you, Chowton. And we'd just like to say Happy Father's Day, and thank you for watching You Make the Difference. Heaven.